Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a walkthrough video for Algebra Word Problems Sheet 2. This, of course, is from MathSoundManders.com. Make sure to check them out. They have tons of great resources for grades 1 through 6 and more. For this worksheet, though, it seems like we might need to find definitive number answers, but that's not what we're doing. What we're looking for is just algebraic expressions. That means an expression without an equal sign with letters and numbers. Okay, so kind of the principle of algebra, we're not actually calculating anything here. We're just writing the expression. So the example is, in a stable there are H horses. So know that that is an unknown value. That's a variable. That's an unknown value. We don't know how many horses there are. But we know that six of them are taken out into the yard to exercise. How many are left in the stable? So you see that we do H minus six. The unknown amount, the question mark essentially, minus six that were taken out, that's how many are left in this table. So we're just writing an expression just like this example. So let's go ahead to number two. Number two is actually a little bit tougher. There are C cyclists, okay, so we don't know how many, an unknown amount, and three-fourths of the cyclists finish the race. How many do not finish, okay? Key word there, do not, meaning that we need to find the portion that did not finish the race versus the three-fourths that did, okay? So if there are three fourths that did, so let's see how many finished the race first. So those, for those that finished, it would be three fourths times C. Okay, that's how many finished. So it would be did not finish. I'll just put not. Okay, those that did not finish, well, it needs to add up to 100%, right? Or a total complete fraction. So what is the missing portion if three fourths finished? How many did not? It would be one fourth. But we still have to multiply it by C, the number of racers, which we don't know. We just know that there's a quarter that did not. So if there were 100 total racers, we would know that uh, 75 finished and 25 did not. But we don't know the total number. It could be 1,000, could be 500, whatever it is. But this is just an algebraic expression that represents how many did not finish based on the unknown amount, okay? Algebra is all about dealing with the unknown. Here we go, bus example. 56 people on a bus. T people get off at the next stop. Okay, so I'm going to start with there. I'm not, I'm not going to write anything else. I just want to start with that. So we have 56 to start with. Okay, that's our first number. And then T people get off. So I'm going to subtract T, okay, because they're getting off the bus. And then three more people get on at the next stop. Okay, so the T people get off and three more get on. How many people are on the bus now? So we need to add that three there. Okay, and I'm done. Now, what you can do in this situation is you can combine like terms. You're going to be seeing this in uh, future lessons of algebra. But we can combine like terms. So we have 56 and we have 3. If we add those two together, we can get 59 minus T. Okay. So essentially, we just combine the 3 that got on the bus, and then we still have to subtract the T people that got off the bus. Okay. So that's how we do that one. Moving on to, I think that's number 4. In a class of 30 children, there are G, girls, what fraction of the class are girls? Okay, so there are G girls. What fraction of the class are girls? So what we're going to do here is there's there's the total here. When we're talking about uh, what portion or what percentage, it's part over the whole. So we know the total is the whole, the total number of children, and then G are girls. So there we go. It's G over 30. That's the fraction that are girls, okay? So G over 30, we could also multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. In the class of C children, there are 16 boys. What fraction of the class are boys? Same thing here, okay? The total, oh, this one's a little bit different, okay? This one, uh, we're not given the total. So it, it says here that the total is C. So let me write this out. So we, I wrote it as whole above. I'm gonna write it as total here. And then we have the part over the total. So our part is the boys, 16, and then our total is C, because we don't know what it is. Okay, we don't know the total, but we do know that there's 16 boys. I'm guessing there's gonna be more than 16, but 16 over C is gonna be a portion of boys. There are B people on a bus at the next stop, seven people get off and 10 more get on. How many more people got on are on the bus now? Okay, take a look up here. See if you can spot the trick a problem that doesn't need algebra okay so the wording here is very uh in particular <laughs> or very particular wording we have how many more people got on the bus now how many more people got on we said that 10 more got on so this one's just 10. this is like the trick question it's just making you read a little bit more carefully which i think is a good thing number seven almost done here 
I cut a piece of, uh, I cut a long piece of wood into 50 centimeter pieces. Okay, so obviously it was much larger than that. I managed to cut W pieces of wood, and there's 20 centimeters left over. How long was the wood to start with? So it's always helpful, I think, to kind of think of an example. And obviously you don't use the same numbers. That's a pretty bad piece of wood. Let me, let me make a better piece of wood. Obviously you don't uh, use the numbers. Eventually you're just going to change it to variables. But let's just these are let's call these 50 centimeters. We could have a bunch here, but the problem is we don't know exactly how many times we cut. We we don't know how many W pieces of wood we have. Okay, but if we want to see how long the wood was to start with, because this thing could keep going, you're gonna take that 50, and you're gonna add each one of those segments. Okay, so we're gonna add it W times, an unknown number of times. So if there were four times four pieces of wood that we got from there we would do 50 plus 50 plus 50 four times okay because there would be four pieces of wood so what we're doing here essentially we're doing 50 times that four but again we're not putting in four we don't know what it is okay so instead of multiplying it by an unknown amount we're going to multiply it by w because that's what it tells us how many pieces we got okay that's what algebra is all right all about is is just representing unknowns with variables and then we have 20 centimeters left over so we have this 20 centimeters left over after we're done cutting it obviously it's not big enough for our standards so we add this 20 at the end now you can kind of get rid of the parentheses so that your final answer looks something like this 50 W plus 20 and you could put 20 centimeters here okay but I'm just gonna leave it as plus 20 okay I have C chocolates which I share equally between five Friends, how many do they get each? Okay, so I like plugging in numbers. If you're confused with the variables, plug in a number. Imagine if it was 10 chocolates, okay, and then you split it between five friends. How many would each friend get? Well, you're probably like, oh, you'd get two because you did uh, 10 divided by five. But we don't know how many, we don't know that it's 10. We know that it's C, and there you go. There's our expression. We don't know how many each friend gets, but we do, we do know how to write the expression, and it's C over five. I have pa five pens already. I'm giving two packs. I am given two packs of pens. Oh, that's nice. Each pack contains T pens. Okay, we don't know how many are each pack. How many pens do I have? No. So we have five to start with. And then I'm given, that means plus, I'm going to get more, two packs of pens. So two, and then each pack contains T pens. So I multiply it, okay, times T, just like that. So if each pack contains T amount, imagine if it was 10, and you had 2, it would be 20. You do 2 times 10 equals 20. Well, we don't know what it is. We don't know it's 10. So we just do 2 times T, that unknown amount. And then we have the 5 to start with, so we add it. There are D deer and P pheasants in the woods. How many legs in total? Okay, this one's a good one because uh, it's a little tricky. We need to know the number of legs. We need, to, we need to know some biology here. So we have D deer. I know deer have four legs each. Okay, and that's a D. And then we have pheasants, and they have two legs each. But we don't know how many deer there are, okay? But we do know, like, for example, if we had three deer, that'd be 12 legs, okay? Because we do three times four, okay? But if we know, sorry, it's not three times D. That'd be three times the legs, which are four. Those are legs. And if we had three pheasants, let's make a five pheasants. We'd do five times the number of legs, and that would be 10. So we'd have 10 legs. Okay, so 3 times 4, 12, 5 times 2, 10. But we don't know how many. Okay, these numbers we just made up. Okay, technically they're unknown, so we're going to replace that number we made up with D. So we have D times 4, and then P times 2, two legs each. So in total means we add the 2. So we have, I need to write it in proper form with the coefficient, that means the number in front of the letter, plus 2 times P. And that's going to be my total right there, okay? So that's what it should look like. That one's actually the trickiest, which is why it's probably number 10. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. I have a Math Salamanders playlist if you want to check that out. Either way, I look forward to seeing you next time right here on Wes Explains Best.